Let's put on a show, folks. Louisville and Florida State. Here we go. An uncharacteristic miss serve from Anna DeBeer. Typically, she's a player that can serve over and in all the time. Very few errors on serve, and I'm sure that that's the last we'll see tonight. The ever stoic Anna DeBeer, who has done and won just about everything you can imagine over the course of her career at Louisville. Here's Charity Looper, the transfer from UCLA from a couple of seasons ago. Kara Cressy got her hands on a ball, turned it back to the Seminoles, and then the attack error knots things up at one. I'll tell you, Kara Cressy getting her hands on Corey Lewis's first swing is huge. It shows the blocker that you know what you're going to face tonight. So being able to shut down Corey Lewis would be huge for the cards to be able to do. That sends Elena Scott back to serve. It's a service error by the libero, number 19 in red. Like we said about this gym, sometimes it's difficult to tell the depth of field because the crowd is so close, right? So you kind of over-serve sometimes. No problems for Corey Lewis, though, and no problems for Reese Robbins. She's listed as a middle blocker, but has consistently played on the right for Danny Busboom Kelly, and that's a big swing for the sophomore from Mansfield, Texas. Not her best weekend a weekend ago, but certainly capable of scoring like that. Reese Robbins at six foot five, and that is why head coach Danny Busboom Kelly wanted to run a six-two this season. Having that big attack on the right side is going to be huge for them as they play in the ACC that is so competitive this year. Well, the Cards and the Seminoles trade kills from the opposite hitters. Maddie Snyder, the sophomore, records her opening kill of the match. And if both of these teams can incorporate their right side hitters, it's going to be a dynamic offense here tonight. If you can get all six of your hitters working, it's so difficult for the blocks to be able to read. And so off the Snyder kill, that sends Kenna Phelan back to serve. There's Charity Looper, one of the left pins for Louisville, swinging away on the right. And get used to that if you haven't seen Looper, the senior from Dallas, Texas. She is a dynamic scorer, and she has been especially hot of late. Oh, I'll tell you, I've heard about how she jumped to the gym, but seeing her jump right in front of me right now was a different ball game. She can jump through this gym and will get up and over blockers. Doesn't matter if she's five foot nine, Sean. Louisville causing some problems for Florida State at the net. They're the best blocking team in the ACC. They haven't terminated for one yet, but they have caused some headaches already for Florida State setting the tone. And they're going to come out competitive and aggressive. That's what this team does. That's their MO. There's a reason they've been to the last three of four Elite Eights. And so Charity Looper will go back to serve once again. Cardinals leading by one. Trouble for Koenig there on serve receive. That ball is tight to the net, and that'll go down as an illegal back row attack by the freshman, Nayeli Cabello. And that's a smart move by Kelsey Perry up there in the middle. She doesn't need to do too much with it. You just got to place it up and over, especially if that setter is back row. She's going to go up, try to make a play on it, but it's not going to work. It'll be called a back row attack every time as soon as that plane is crossed. That sent Audrey Koenig back to serve. There's a service error by FSU's veteran at the pin. Fegran Kong back to serve, more commonly known as PK. This is her second start in ACC play, and that's a strong way to get things going for PK. And a serve for Kong. She's been a staple middle for this Louisville team. If you've watched them over the years, you know PK. She hasn't had as much work in ACC play. Like you've said, they've depended on Hannah Sherman, but PK being back in this game tonight is huge, especially because of the success she had last year versus Florida State. So off the first ace of this set and of this match, the service error by Kong. And Louisville's lead is back down to one. Tight start here for both of these squads. as Kyleen Filamawa serves it in. Anna DeBeer is roofed. Yane Henke and Corey Lewis teaming up. That is a fantastic team blocking the outside over there. Yane Henke can get up and read right where that hit is going to be. Look at that is essentially a solo block, and she is so excited. Henke, the D2 transfer. Corey Lewis got her hands on a ball. Anna DeBeer looking cross and got that ball to fall in play. 
Boy, the range of these Louisville outsides is so incredibly impressive. Especially Anna DeBeer. That's why she's a veteran player. This is her grad year victory lap. That's the volleyball IQ I was mentioning. She doesn't need to go up and take a big rip on it. She finds the place right in the middle of that court. Ellie Glock goes back to serve, tight to the net. Phelan rescues it. And there's Reese Robbins with her second kill early on. That's a great move by Reese Robbins. She sees that the hands were already up early, those Florida State blockers, so she finds a way to tool off the hands of Taylor Head. Two swings, two kills for Reese Robbins, the leading scorer on the floor, thank you very much. Good pass there by Koenig on serve, receive. And Corey Lewis was able to off-speed that ball to the floor for a kill. After she was blocked the first time by Kara Cressy, you see the adjustment in Corey Lewis's game. She's going to come up and pull to the right side so she's able to avoid that one solo block. Nine kills on Sunday at Virginia Tech for Corey Lewis, hitting north of 600, had five blocks as well. Kara Cressy on the slide. Taylor Head picked up by Scott and dug out of play. Taylor, Taylor Head's a player that we know has a fantastic resume coming in. She played at Arkansas for three years before this. This is her senior season. She's not been able to heat up as much with Florida State. It's because she needs those tempo sets. That was a set that she can put away every time. I was going to say, good start to the match for Taylor Head. That bodes well for the Knowles. And so, too, does an ace serve from Lauren Robertson. A 3-0 run for FSU. Nice pass by Looper. And FSU does just enough to get that ball across the net. I'll tell you, that swing from the outside was a hard cross. That is difficult to dig, but Taylor had another veteran here on this court. She knows how to play defense even when it's out of system like that. That is a tight pass to hit. Two-point lead for the Knowles. DeBeer this time going off speed. Back row, Koenig picked up by Glock. There's an attack error by DeBeer operating off the right, and Danny Busboom Kelly has seen enough. The Knowles are on a 5-0 scoring run early in set one here in Tallahassee. They lead it 11-8. I mean, apart from Dan Fisher, she is truly the most decorated coach in this conference. As we take a look at what's at stake, Louisville's looking for their fifth straight win over the Seminoles. Swings like that from Anna DeBeer will help. Meanwhile, for the Knowles, they're looking for their highest ranked home win in program history. Not only that, but this would be the second highest win in program history, period. So a win here tonight would be huge for the Seminoles, especially because they had a loss last week at Virginia. They got swept. This would be amazing for their confidence to be able to pull out a win here today. Another service error by Anna DeBeer. And Alexandra, for Louisville coming in here, they have played a gauntlet of teams. You see the four service errors on the screen. There have been some attack errors as well. How do you settle the nerves? How do you settle the adrenaline here on the road in a cozy atmosphere that has proven to be a, calam a, a cauldron of calamity? time and time again for visiting teams. I'll tell you, I'm surprised that this team could even have nerves. This is their eighth game against a ranked opponent, so they're no stranger to it. And this is Audrey Koenig showing what she can do. She's also got that hard cross swing. That ball is timed perfectly. Robbins takes first contact. Looper pops it over. 6-1 run for the Knowles. Snyder looking cross court, missed the sideline. And that's a point to the Cardinals. And you know, that's a tempo set that you want. That is the right set from Lauren Robertson, especially because Maddie Snyder's a lefty hitter. If she can get up and make that play, it's going to be very difficult for the opposing team to block. She was just a little bit late on her approach there. And so off the side out, Scott goes back to serve. Heads pass tight to the net. Snyder off speed, turn back. Koenig picked up by Scott. Great defense by Scott, but the attack error by Louisville puts another point in FSU's column. 
just a matter of waiting for Elena Scott to heat up. You know she's going to have digs all night. But Florida State working through those out-of-system plays. Those are tight balls to the net. And because Louisville's block is so big, it's difficult for those balls to go right back in the court. The attack error by Charity Looper. Nothing wrong there for P.K. Kahn. She's off to a good start in this match. She's got an ace, and now she's got a kill on one swing. She's got a lot of power and a really fast arm swing. She just powers right through Kelsey Perry's block. Her hand was up. That block was there. But because of the power that she's able to put on it, that ball goes right through her hands. Nayeli Cabello back to serve once again. It induces an overpass. Philomawa keeps it up. Timeout, Florida State. Right now, Florida State just needs to calm down and get in system again. There's too many out-of-system plays, especially when you play an elite team like Louisville. They're going to capitalize on those out-of-system balls if you're not able to put them away. So passes need to get more in system so that the Florida State hitters can do what they do best and put the ball away. This is a Florida State team that comes into this match hitting 284 on the season, one of the best hitting teams in the country. Louisville, meanwhile, their opponent hit percentage, Alexandra, 135. They're one of the best defensive teams. Both teams hovering in the low 200s here early on. And this is what you can expect, right? Because both of these teams are running a 6-2, and they have massive blockers, all six rotations. So we're going to probably see a lot of blocks tonight or a lot of contested swings. It's been hard work for both teams here early. FSU established a little bit of breathing room off of a 6-1 run. Credit to Louisville for trimming into that with a couple of points of their own. A kill by P.K. Kong and a service ace as well by Nayeli Cabello. Nayeli Cabello is such an impressive player. She's only a freshman, and she's as decorated as they come. She's a three-time state champion and a high school Gatorade player of the year. She's on the national team. She played for Under Armour All-America. Her list goes on and on as she comes into this program. And we talked to Danny Buss and Kelly. He said, how, were you, how did you know that you were going to be able to trust the 6-2? She said, this player speaks for itself. I knew that she was going to be able to handle the pressure because of what she came in here with. And she's been fantastic for them all season long thus far in her first year. Not just the reigning ACC Freshman of the Week, but also was the Freshman of the Week in Week 1 when the Cardinals faced Wisconsin and Tennessee. All she did was dish out 37 assists and 13 digs against two top 15 teams. Welcome to D1, Nayeli Cabello. There's the service error by the youngster, and FSU re-extends the lead to three. You know, and it's not often that you see setters win those Player of the Week awards, Sean, because hitters get kills, blockers get blocks, Defenders get digs, so you have Setter of the Week's award, but for you to get a Player of the Week as a freshman, as a setter, it's a big deal. A season ago, Kenna Phelan was Florida State's freshman setter. Now she's a sophomore and back to serve. Looper off speed over the block. Nothing off speed about that quick arm swing by Audrey Koenig, and she turns it down the line for the kill. That tempo is something that Kenneth Phelan and the Florida State setters have been working on. She knows what Audrey Koenig needs. It needs to be high enough, but it's got to be out quick enough as well for her to beat the block. She's able to turn that ball line. Second kill of the match for Koenig. Phelan, who averages just north of five assists per set in FSU 6-2, serves it once more. Head picks it up. Koenig puts it down. Pins feeding pins now here in Tallahassee. That is a great out-of-system play by Florida State. That's something they worked on all week in practice, is that out-of-system ball. You know it happens when the dig can't be perfect, and team can be prolific on all sides of the ball. And they've been battle-tested early. Like you said, that sweep for Stanford at home was what they needed, especially because they already had two ranked losses on the season. Yeah, the Cardinals coming off of a straight set loss to Nebraska. Weren't thrilled, obviously, with how they played. They righted the ship in a hurry against the Stanford Cardinals. And they'll try to right the ship here. Looper jammed up on serve, receives. She pops it over to the net. And Kelsey Perry was ready and waiting. FSU really trying to pour it on here, latter stages of set one. 
That was a great job by the Florida State blockers of waiting there. You've got to use your eyes and stay put, right? If you know that ball is going to be out of system, you've got to wait on it. She gets up, puts a touch on it. Maldonado Diaz off speed. Koenig off the Kong block. Maldonado Diaz picked up by head in the back row. Traffic jam for Florida State and a free ball for Louisville. Kong off speed picked up by Phelan. Out of system ball coming for Henke. And Yane Henke splits the scene. That's the player that you don't want to heat up. Yane Henke is typically an outside hitter, so she's used to getting swings all the time, getting those reps, but that's an out-of-system play that she times extremely well, hits it right through that solo block. Five straight points now for Florida State. Out of the middle, there's a kill for Sofia Maldonado-Diaz. And that was a smart move by Louisville. You've got to switch it up, right? So they bring Maldonado Diaz into the middle to hit so that the blockers are a little bit confused. They don't think that the set is going to go to Maldonado Diaz because she's been set the least so far. But that is a smart play to switch up the offense there. Peyton Peterson checks in to serve. Danny Busboom Kelly digging deeper into the bench here late in set one. And Audrey Koenig continues to dig deeper into the gas tank. Pedal to the metal for the Seminoles senior. That is her fourth kill on 10 swings. What's working for the Knolls right now is spreading the ball. You have to keep these Louisville blockers guessing, and the setters are doing a fantastic job of moving the offense around here. I mentioned the four kills for Koenig, two digs as well. Seven-point lead for the Seminoles. Tough serve. Scott does well to pick it up. Maldonado Diaz rejected by the block. And goodness gracious, when you looked at the block numbers coming into this match, you'd wonder who wrote this script. The Knolls out blocking Louisville in set number one. It's definitely shocking, but Florida State came to play. This is a team that can block as well as anybody in the country when they're synced up. But there's Anna DeBeer showing who she is. That is a massive rip right there. She gets right through that double block. Her arm swing is so fast. Watch her get up. Kelsey Perry was not able to get there and close that block. And Anna DeBeer is going to put it away. She's got to be feeling some frustration right now. Losing to this team is not something that she's accustomed to. 24 kills, 19 digs over the last couple of matches for Anna DeBeer. Impressive numbers for the veteran. And speaking of veterans who can put up impressive numbers, Taylor had number one in white for Florida State, certainly accustomed to the concept. You know, when you have a new player like Taylor Head at only 5'9", it takes a little bit of getting used to, to adjust to the tempo that that type of player needs. But that is what Kenneth Phelan has done so well this season, is working on that, repping that out, getting comfortable with Taylor, because you need Taylor Head, especially as this season heats up, gets more competitive in ACC play here. You're going to want to see a postseason appearance, and you need Taylor Head to be working. And Chris Poole mentioned it. it's not just necessarily the tempo, but also the placement of the ball because her window of opportunity to swing and deliver a kill is very finite. It is because she isn't able to reach as high, right? But she's got a great vertical. She's got a ton of range, so she's capable and able to do it. It's really the tempo that's the key. So far, so good for Head. Two kills on two swings, and FSU continues to pour it on the Cardinals. And a serve, they lead by nine. Kai Filamawa is such a gamer. She's got a lot of aces on this season for this team because she can place the ball so well, especially in crunch time like this. The pressure does not get to her. Her 18th ace there. She's got a positive ace to error ratio, and there's a nice side out for the Cardinals. Guess who once again? Anna DeBeers starting to get into the swing of things here in the middle to latter stages of this set. Four kills now for DeBeer in set number one. Corey Lewis out of the middle, off hands and out of play. And just like that, the Seminoles have raced to set point. 
Setting for Lewis is a smart play there. You're off the net, you only have a solo block. So Kenneth Phelan sees that, gives the ball to Corey Lewis, and knows typically if it's one-on-one, -on -one, Corey Lewis is gonna come out on top. FSU hitting nearly 400 in this opening set. De Beer, turn back. Second effort off hands and out of play. De Beer does her job, tools the block, and sides out for Louisville. Florida State's block is proving that they can do it, but you have to press each and every swing. Even when you're up 10 points right now at game point, this is a Louisville team that can catch momentum and not be stopped. On the slide, Corey Lewis puts set one to an ace. Great job by the red, white, and blue to manage a silver. And not just Corey Lewis and Kara Cressy and Elena Scott. Anna DeBeer was also on that team as an alternate. Speaking of Cressy, there she is on the slide. Taylor Head, smart shot rolling it down the line for the kill. That's a very difficult ball to time, and a kudos to Maddie Snyder from taking that back set all the way across the court for Taylor Head to be able to time well, put it right over that right back defense. Lauren Robertson serves it in again. What a swing by Charity Looper. Only one kill in the first set. Ended up hitting a negative, did Looper. You have to imagine if she can get going, that can really change the complexion of things here in Tallahassee in a hurry. And Charity Looper is not an inconsistent player by any means. She's a competitor, and she's going to come out ready to fight here, especially after dropping the first set. The reigning offensive player of the week was able to side out for a moment, and FSU responds with yet another kill of their own. Taylor Head now going back to serve. Florida State hitters are doing a great job of staying aggressive, even with these massive Louisville blockers. Four kills on four swings for Taylor Head. Reese Robbins off hands. Corey Lewis to the Terraflex. I'll tell you, that was a ball that was a little bit missed time there, but it doesn't matter because Corey Lewis is able to execute such a great arm swing. She puts a snap on the ball that it doesn't matter where the set is. It's going to go over and in, and it's going to go down likely above the 10-foot line. Five kills on seven swings, hitting 7-14 early on. Charity Looper is lobbying for a touch call. She won't get it. It's point Florida State for now. Might Danny Busboom Kelly challenge? She did. I think that's a good move, my da Danny Busboom Kelly. Charity Looper looked at her confidently saying, I know that I saw a touch, especially after you dropped the first set. Now you've come out not on top in this second set, right? So you've got to be able to reclaim the momentum somehow, or at least ice Florida State, even if the challenge doesn't go your way. So for the first time this evening, Wesley Radigan goes to the monitor to take a look at all the different camera angles around Tully Jim tonight. The initial ruling was no touch and an attack error on Charity Looper. Looper and her head coach, Danny Busboom Kelly, begged to differ, and so here we are with FSU for the moment, leading it one set to none and up 4-1 here in set two. Here it is, and it was definitely a close play because you saw everybody's effort on the touch. Even Taylor Head tried to get involved on the dig there, so it makes you think that the defense saw a touch. But that didn't take long at all. That's a no-touch call for the state point. That's a great camera angle and a very clear shot that our up-and-down referees, Mark Prater and Wesley Radigan, were correct. So with that lost challenge, Louisville is down to one for the balance of the match unless we go to a fifth, at which point they would get one back. Florida State was in the net. not typical for Corey Lewis to be in the net. Sometimes, though, when you have a triple block come in, it messes up your momentum a little bit. This Florida State team is not really used to putting up a triple block. You always want to get it there with a the back row attack, but it sometimes doesn't, so I think maybe it was just a little missed momentum there. That sends Nayeli Cabello back to serve. Head stretches on serve, receive, and there's the first rejection by Louisville of this match. It was about time. That was a good 
job by them being able to time that out of system ball. That set came from far away, but Sofia Maldonado Diaz is able to get up over it. Put a good read on that ball. Maldonado Diaz, the transfer from Arizona, got hands on that one. Cabello dug that ball out from Corey Lewis. Good defense here by the Cards. And Anna DeBeer cashes it in with a back row kill. Now Louisville is starting to look more in system. You see the Elena Scott effect, right? This is a massive dig. It's not easy to make. And the setter puts it up, gives it to Anna DeBeer. She could have gotten anybody involved on that offense, but knows DeBeer wants these points right now. 3-0 run for the Cards. DeBeer now hitting north of 300. Overpass put down by Looper. That is the jumping through the gym that I was talking about. She times that overpass so well, there's no way the best defender in the country is getting that ball up. And just like that, the Cardinals lead set two by one. Better pass there by Philomawa. And Corey Lewis off hands finds the floor. It's a good job by Florida State. The pass isn't perfect there. Lauren Robertson still finds a way to get it to Corey Lewis. And for Florida State to stay aggressive, even now that Louisville is showing that their true colors and the way they can play is impressive. Corey Lewis has gone back to serve more of late. And P.K. Kong just hammered that ball out of the middle. That is all energy from Louisville. Watch this back set. That is such a great play, and Kelsey Perry's not able to put any sort of a read on that play. That, those hands just went straight up. PK puts it right to the right back defense. Second kill on three swings for Kong. Koenig off hands, picked up by Looper. That is a great touch by Looper. She is so athletic. Koenig will try again. No digging that one up. Audrey Koenig with another kill. That's smart there. You've got to start earning some points back, so you just go nice and easy for the high hands. Fifth kill of the match for Audrey Koenig. As she shows off more of the repertoire here this evening. Six up, set two. FSU winning set one, 25-16. To beer. Off hands, there's another kill for Anna. What you need right there is for your middle to, to be able to come in and fill that block. Yane Henke can do a really great job of identifying where that hit is, but you need the double block there, and that's going to be the key if you're going to stop players like Anna DeBeer or Charity Looper. Both sides getting the pins going in this match. Here's Koenig off the right side. Another kill for number four in white. Oh, my. Sean, I thought that ball went through the net. It was so far straight down. That is a great play by Audrey Koenig. Watch her get up and time this ball. Oh, my goodness. Goes right through the inside of Kara Cressy's hands. That's a major angle she just took. The second set has authored some theatrics from Audrey Koenig and from Anna DeBeer. And Kelsey Perry knew exactly what to do with that overpass. Kelsey Perry doesn't have a ton of power. She's not great at timing it, so she knows what her strengths and weaknesses are. That is a very smart play to just be able to go up, put it where it's not, and eliminate any sort of error. Pan to pan, and DeBeer finds the back corner. Now that you have a hitter heating up, you know that you're going to feed her. So Florida State Block needs to make an adjustment here. Start cheating a little bit. You know that DeBeer is going to get the ball. She's heating up right now. And Louisville needs to win this set. Second team All-American in addition to sharing Co-Player of the Year honors with Koenig. Taylor Head off speed. Anna DeBeer, my gracious. There it is. This is a player that's in her fifth year. She knows what it takes to win, and she loves her far-tempoed set there. That is a push from across the net. A slow start to the year for Anna DeBeer, but of late, her stat lines have looked a lot like that. Big-time numbers hitting north of three and 400, and the block has also come alive for DeBeer as well. She rejects Koenig.
head off the outside hand. Smart swing by the veteran. That's one of the best sets I've seen Kenneth Phelan make to the outside. She's across the gym right there. Pushes it at the tempo that Taylor Head needs. That is a great play. Taylor Head's able to put it right through the hands of the block. A tight set two, first to 25, win by two to claim it. Off a tight slide, there's Kara Cressy. Getting Kara Cressy involved in this slide is her specialty. Dan and Buscu and Pelly told us that no matter what, doesn't matter if I'm running the 6-2, that's Kara Cressy's swing, so they've got to find ways to implement it, and that, you know if that starts connecting, it's going to be dangerous for whatever team Louisville's facing. Cressy on the preseason All-ACC team a season ago led everybody in the conference in hitting percentage. Corey Lewis was number two. Head! Have yourself a set and a half, Taylor Head. Taylor Head deserves this. She's worked so hard all season long to get used to this Florida State team, and that is an out-of-system play that she's able to just take the high hands, get it right to the donut of the court there. One of the biggest pickups in the transfer portal came here to Florida State. Taylor Head off of the first ever Elite Eight trip for Arkansas, now a Seminole. As Anna DeBeer is turned back, good defense, and Robbins rolls it to the back row. Look at Koenig laying out. That is wide. FSU is lobbying a touch. Chris Poole has not yet made the move to the green card, and now, in fact, he has. That was a great play by Florida State right there. I think that this is the right call, whether or not you get the call. It's for momentum because Florida State made an awesome dig there, Audrey Koenig. And for Kai Filamau to be able to put her hands on that, put a set up there, that was all finesse as well from Taylor Head to be able to take that set, tried to tool it around the hands. It was no mistake with that play. Second challenge of the match, both involving a no-touch call. Louisville was incorrect on their challenge attempt in set one. What do you see here? I think it's a touch all day. You see the ball change directions as soon as Reese Robbins is able to get her hands on it up there. So watch right here. The ball's going this direction, and it turns out even further. If it rocks back a little faster, I think that there's going to be a touch call on this play. And while we continue to take a look at all the different angles, Alexandra, a stark contrast between set one and set two. Set one more defensive, set two, both of these teams hitting north of 300. Well, now you know that you have to get your aggression involved, right? So it's going to be an all-out play. That's what these teams do best, right? They've got awesome hitters, so you've got to use them. A two-point swing in the balance for every potential review. And in both cases, the challenging team is unsuccessful. So now both teams are down to just one for the balance of the match until we get to a potential fifth set. Just to keep it exciting, right? It's been awfully exciting already. And now we'll see how strategic these coaches are in utilizing their one remaining challenge. Elena Scott gets us back underway. Corey Lewis on the slide. Misses it long, a rare error for Corey Lewis this season, her first of the match. And it's hard as a setter, right, because that's the tempo that you want, but Corey Lewis was late to her approach there, so you've got to be able to adjust your set, even if you're in the middle of your approach with it. Taylor head turned back by P.K. Kong and Reese Robbins. That block was sealed, and there was no way you were getting around it unless they were able to tool it, which Taylor had wasn't. Those hands are faced inside the court. That's a block all day. And just like that, a 3-0 run by Louisville. Somebody's got to pick that ball up. Looper turned back. Block covers. Robbins is roofed. It's still up. We all got a piece up of it. And into our headsets. That ball came up and off <laughs> to the court over here and onto our table. But that is a reason why you do not ever 
give up on the play even when you think it's over. You've got to stay involved the whole time. Maddie Snyder followed that. Welcome back to Tallahassee on the ACC Network Extra. We're here at Lucy McDaniel Court at Tully Gym. Sean Davison, Alexander DiCapua, Meredith Grimm, our entire crew on hand with you as we get back underway. Louisville trying to turn the tables on the Seminoles and P.K. Kong asserts herself against Corey Lewis. A rare solo block against Corey Lewis. Corey just wasn't able to get up and put a turn on it. That's a big tempo play to come right out of break. So you've got to be able to have all the energy as if you didn't just take a time out there. The service error puts an end to a strong service rotation for Elena Scott. And puts an end to that aforementioned Louisville run. Sixth service error of the match for the Cardinals. Tight. And Reese Robbins tips it to the floor. Alexandra Louisville coming into this match. Usually plays a 5-1. They're playing a 6-2 this year. And to run a 6-2, you need two setters who are effective enough, and you need to have effective enough weapons as well. To get this kind of production out of Robbins as an opposite is really a validating sign for Danny Busboom Kelly. It sure is, especially when you want to make your offense dynamic, right? She's a middle hitter by nature, so you're able to set her in the middle as well like you were with that point. That's also the privilege of being six foot five, right? She missed time that, but she's able to still put a tip on it, put it right down because the defense was ready for the swing. Louisville leading the second set by five. Dupe serves down the sideline. Maldonado Diaz goes cross and registers another kill. That's the other opposite for the Cardinals. That's her third kill on seven swings. This is a player that we haven't talked too much about, Maldonado Diaz. She transferred, like you said, from Arizona. She's a player with over 1,400 kills on her career. And for reference, Audrey Koenig just reached 1,000 in her first year, so you, or in her third, fourth year. So you know that this is a prolific outside hitter that has come here and joined and been a part of the right side offense She's been fantastic this season, but quiet tonight. What a rally we have on our hands here. And FSU says that's enough of that. And I should have laid out there to watch the action of that play right there. That is a fantastic rally from both of these sides. Florida State getting the point there. The whole gym is starting to feel that momentum switch. Crowd at capacity and looking for any opening in the action to get themselves involved and to get ever louder. Kenneth Feeling back to serve. Good pass by De Beer and a great swing by PK Kong. Good offense by Louisville there. The back one is such a sneaky set, especially with PK. She's really good at timing that ball. That's something that they've worked on really well. Good effort defensively, but nonetheless, another kill for Koenig. Very crafty from Audrey Koenig there. She hasn't missed time. It's a little bit off. She came from the back row to be able to come and put a swing on that, but she's very smart with where she places it, and that's the veteran leadership that you see with Audrey Koenig. Koenig with 10 or more kills in each of the last 11 matches. That was her eighth. Head targets the block and tools it for the kill. You can see the excitement between Kenna Phelan and Taylor Head. You can look at her right now talking to Kenna. That's a great set. That's the tempo that they've been working on all season long. They're midway through the season. ACC play is heating up, and so are these two. And a serve for Audrey Koenig, and the Knolls are riding the wave of momentum of their own. Timeout Louisville. This is what makes volleyball so exciting. It is a game of momentum, a game of runs. So you've got to take it when you get it, and you've got to figure out how to side out when you're on the other side of the net. A 3-0 run, in fact, for Florida State is ever in 2024. And that's what you get with the 6-2 as well, because you have Reese Robbins out there able to put blocks up, and you have Maldonado Diaz as well, right? Those 1,400 kills are accompanied by a few hundred blocks. And one of the many 
many storylines in this match. You've got the best blocking team in the conference against the best team at avoiding the block. And Audrey Koenig has shown a propensity at times this season to go on scoring runs and record aces in bunches. That's two in a row for the senior. This is a serve from Audrey Koenig that we have not seen her entire career. Those are two back-to-back -back aces and a really close miss there that she'll take. The lead back to three for the moment for Louisville. And perhaps most importantly for the cards, they get four off the service line. Maldonado Diaz goes back to do the honors. Head, roofed, feeling, tries to track it down, and there's another big rejection by the cards. They knew that was going to the outside because Kenneth Feeling and Taylor Head just started connecting. That's the time it's kind of feeling to say, no, let me for that one. And this is another huge game here tonight. Louisville in their first ACC road trip lost their first set of conference play. They're trying to write that in a hurry here in set number two. There's longtime Louisville assistant Dan Meske drawing up a play for the cards. And as they get set to break the huddle, we'll see how this race to 25 shapes up here. Yeah, and when you think about that, right, they've got four ACC matches already in the books. They've been battle tested for Stanford at home. It's a completely different ball game going on the road. And you're not in the KFC Young Center like you are here. You're in Coley Gym where the confines are small and you can feel the fans. You can literally reach out from the court and feel them right next to you. And so, with a four-point lead, Sofia Maldonado-Diaz goes back to serve once more. Back row attack, Koenig. That is the switching up the offense that you need to see. That is an in-system set that the blockers are anticipating that a front row hitter is going to get. But instead, give it to the ACC Player of the Year. The block is not up on that. And to be able to put the ball down and not even have Elena Scott, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, put a touch on it, that's a smart play from the setter. You give a player like Audrey Koenig a 1v1 look, and a player of her talent and her caliber will find a way more often than not. Kyleen Filamawa commits the service error, the lead back to four for Louisville. Missed serves and unforced errors are something that neither team wants. I know Florida State has worked really hard on that this season, minimizing those unforced errors, especially behind the service line. Anna DeBeer serves it in. Koenig picks it up, the off-speed tip back. Kara Cressy with the rejection for Louisville. The tip is a smart play, but when you're about six foot six, it doesn't matter if you've got a tip over it because even as high as you can tip, she's going to be able to put a touch on it, and then that's where the defense is going to be, right, if you are able to put it up and over her. And so there's Kara Cressy, who, Alexandra, I mentioned a season ago, Offense was what she was known for. She led the ACC offensively, was one of the best hitters in the entire country. But this year it's been her defense averaging a block and a half per set and being top three in the ACC behind Julia Haggerty and her teammate Hannah Sherman. A balanced middle blocker is all you can hope for. This is only her second season as a starter. And to be able to do that for this team and put up these kind of numbers is so impressive. So you've got to know on the other side for Florida State who you're dealing with and figure out how to get around her. It's been a little bit more PK's game tonight. But Kara Cressy is just as dominant. Cressy a preseason All-ACC selection. Playing like it particularly on defense. She's got three blocks to go along with one kill. Not the same volume of swings on offense. Part of that is the 6-2, but she has found ways to impact matches this season, and she has certainly put her fingerprints on the second set. Six blocks in the set for Louisville as a team after none in the first, and they have a five-point lead with two points separating them from equalizing this match one set apiece. Lewis out of the middle. De Beer digs it out. Looper pops it over. And you got to play that ball if you're Florida State. 
It falls into the campfire. A couple of players slipped. Tough break by the Knowles, and Louisville is on the doorstep. That's a miscommunication because Kai Filamala is not used to playing libero. She played libero last season, but it's not her native position, right? So she thinks that Taylor Head is going to come up and make a pass on that. That's an easy free ball that you've got to capitalize on. Louisville didn't even think they were going to get that ball up and over, but the defensive player of the year, Elena Scott's able to make that play over. Still set point for the Cardinals, who now are a side out away from leveling the match one set apiece. It was FSU who won set one, 25 to 16. And they send one of their setters back to serve Lauren Robertson. It's a good serve, and it's another ace serve for Robertson. Staying aggressive on game point with your serve when you're down is extremely difficult to do. But because Lauren Robertson is a grad transfer, this is also her victory lap, right? She knows what it's like being in these situations, so she's aggressive on her serve, and it works. Overpass put down by Snyder. I'm really liking the placement of these Florida State hitters when the ball is overpassed. Being able to do that is so calm. It's organized volleyball. You don't need to do too much with it. You don't need to try to go up and get a kill, especially when Louisville has the ability to put digs on pretty much any ball. And Chris Poole said it himself to Alexander. He said, Louisville is a team that plays such clean volleyball. They're not going to give us a lot of mistakes when they knew we need to be ready to capitalize. Exactly, and that's also why you want to eliminate the unforced errors behind the service line, Tom, because you want to be able to take those mistakes and unforced errors that the other team gives you and capitalize on them. When you're equally having service errors, that's the problem. Now, Google's got seven compared to Florida State's two, so Florida State is definitely winning in that category. But that's three points that right now would be a tie game. FSU doing their part to make the second set more interesting. Louisville ran away for a period around that 15 point mark, led by as many as five. And FSU is trimmed into it at a couple of different junctures. In fact, on a 3 0 run now to trim the lead down to three. The cards have come alive in set number two, hitting north of 400 as a team. The defense, as you see there, six blocks of the Seminoles. They hit north of 400 in the first set. They are hitting sub 200 in set number two. What a start to this match here in Tallahassee. The ebbs and flows have been quite simply unreal. And Lauren Robertson goes back to serve once more. Good pass by Scott. Robertson pulled out on first contact. Philomawis sets the out of system to head. Back row to Beer kept up. Snyder swats it out of play, and that will do it in set number two. She's not lost to Florida State once in her career, and I don't think she plans on doing it tonight either. Back bump, and FSU swings away to get things started. There's Charity Looper. As electric as Anna DeBeer has been, Charity Looper has been considerably quieter. Could she get going here in set number three? That is kill number five compared to three errors for Looper. On the slide, Corey Lewis goes cross, and FSU signs out one point apiece. I love that play. It's not quite the tempo that you want the slide to be ran at, but it still works. As long as they're working on getting that involved and keeping Corey Lewis involved on offense, switching it up, running the slide, it's going to work. So even if it's not the tempo that you want it to be, keep running it until you get it there. Maldonado Diaz turns it down the line. Snyder goes over the back. And FSU nearly came away with a block. Koenig off hands and down. Lauren Robertson is the MVP of that play right there. She's got fantastic defense, and she's still finding ways to spread the ball. She knew who she needed to give it to, put it out to Audrey Koenig, but it's got to be far enough outside that she's able to hit the high hands of the block and turn the ball line. Lauren Robertson, the transfer from Memphis, didn't play a ton a season ago. But Chris Poole loved how, from what he could see, she spread the offense, connected well with her middles in Tennessee. And I'll tell you who's starting to connect. It's not a middle, it's Charity Looper. 
and you said, can she heat up? The answer is absolutely. This is a player with so much athleticism. Look how fast her arm swing is. She is dynamic. It's very rare for Corey Lewis to not be able to get there and close a block. She's got fantastic footwork. So that's just a testament to Charity Looper and what she can do. And might as well keep that momentum rolling with an ace serve for Looper, the third of the match for the Cardinals, who lead this third set three to two over FSU. Another strong serve this time down the line. FSU sides out, though, with Audrey Koenig, number four in white. She's turning the ball line and making it look easy, but it's actually extremely difficult to do, especially right there. That ball was set from a really low point of contact. It did not have a lot of pace on it. It's hard to get up and turn that ball, but Audrey Koenig can make it look so easy. 12th straight match with 10 or more kills for Audrey Koenig. Delayed call, Point Louisville off the touch. You know, you hear 10 kills in Audrey Koenig and you think, of course she's gonna get that many, but it really is such a feat to be able to do that, especially in this conference, this point in the season. And especially against this team who plays the level of defense they have consistently played for the most part this season. Opportunity for the Cardinals. And Anna DeBeer gets it inside the block. Johanna Sova checking in for FSU here as their second middle blocker of set number three. I think this is a smart adjustment from Chris Poole because Kelsey Perry has not been able to connect on blocks or really with swings. So it's why not get this international freshman involved. She's got a lot of athleticism. The ceiling is high for Sova. Well, the fans in the front row just got a meet and greet with Anna DeBeer. Loved the pursuit, but she ran out of room. You mentioned Sova, the freshman from Estonia. International experience on top of her high school experience back in her native country. Delayed in getting to Florida State because of playing on the Estonian national team, in fact. And you got to love Chris Poole, right? Doesn't want to get her involved throughout the season in teams that you can beat. Why not throw her again in against the fourth ranked team in the country? Look at her nerves right now. So Sova's gonna have to find a way to get there close to the block. She's not able to do it there. And look, she immediately owns that play. That's a massive swing from DeBeer. But that's just Joanna Sova having to get comfortable out there. Anna DeBeer is hitting nearly 500. Kenna Phelan back bumps to the back row. Sova this time records the rejection. Look at this react here. That's exactly what she needs for her confidence right now. A solo block up the middle. Let her know that she can do it. Watch her time this and get up, press up and over. Blocking Kara Cressy is no easy thing to do. Chris Poole really likes this 6'5 freshman, says she has got a lot of potential. The thing he did say is that back in her native country, they ran a lot of pin attacks, and so not a whole lot went through the middle back in Estonia. So that is what she's getting used to now playing for the Seminoles. Tabir. Off of hands, but it won't matter. FSU was also in the net. That's Sova, the freshman, being called for. Those are errors that you can expect. She's a young player. She's only seen about five matches worth of work, and I think a very limited amount of sets played. This is the biggest match of her career that she's just entered in the middle of this crucial must-win set. And that's an ace serve for Anna DeBeer. Now Florida State just needs to calm down and start mi stop minimizing their errors right here. You get the impression that you got to crawl before you walk, walk before you run. You need a solid pass here. One pass. And it doesn't come. This has been a rare stretch of points where you've seen Taylor Head struggle on serve receive. She's typically one of the best passers in the country. She's phenomenal on serve receive. And Florida State's been one of the best passing teams in the country, which is unusual for them in serve receive. So they've been dominant with that this season. At Lucy McDaniel Court, and I mentioned getting the crowd hype. That is one thing Anna DeBeer is trying to eliminate as she once again targets Taylor Head. Cross court, there's a kill for Yane Henke. 
Yane is a player that we saw heat up in the first set and not a lot of action in the second set. This is a player that you need to keep repping out sets to. She's got a great ability to score and she can find holes in the defense. That's what makes her so good. That's why she's a D2 national champion, Sean. Pass is tight. Looper launches. Miscommunication by the Knowles who send a free ball over. And Kara Tadlock says that was outside the antenna. I think that was the right call there. Florida State just has to calm down and clean it up. This isn't outside of their scope of capability, right? Just get one pass, keep the ball in system, and make a play. Good pass there by Kyleen Filamawa. And when Florida State is getting good first ball contact. That is exactly what they like to do. They like to run through the middle and Corey Lewis. When you have dominant hitters or an All-American like Corey Lewis, if you can get a pass out of serve receive, set her nearly every time. She's been blocked more than usual tonight. It doesn't matter though. She's gonna heat up throughout the entirety of the match. Lauren Robertson goes back to serve. She drops it in short. Looper looking through the seam. No touch point FSU. You hear a lot of announcers talk about the season about Charity Looper's swag. I love the way she doesn't get a call her way. She looks right at the line judge and asks for it. Looks at her team, thinks she has it. The attitude is what you need. Reese Robbins with an out of system back set. Back row attack by Koenig. DeBeer ranges back on first ball contact. Both teams scrambling in this rally. Lewis got to it. Snyder tips it over. And that was the fourth contact. That was just a misread by Audrey Koenig there. Of course, if she realized that that was going to be the fourth touch, she would have sent it right over. But you've got to be aware of that. And the team needs to talk, right? Surely someone on the court saw that. You've got to be yelling, send it over. And so Louisville leads by three. Cabello back to serve. Head turned back. Robertson tried to set that ball off the net for Maddie Snyder, but it creeps over and is put down in a hurry. It's a difficult play to make, but that's the theme right now. Florida State needs to calm down, minimize their errors, and get a side out right here. Better pass. Lewis dug up for the moment. And that is outside the antenna by Sofia Maldonado-Diaz. You have to admire the all-out effort there, but when you get a pass and you can set Corey Lewis, good things are going to happen. So just stay in system and look at the effort from this team there. That's a great first touch, second touch, and third. Corey Lewis had four kills in the first set. She's had four since. Starting to come alive here again in this third set. She teams up with Koenig to turn that ball back. Maldonado Diaz won't get a touch. That's an attack error by the opposite. And if you're able to get in system, you see if you're, you can apply pressure on the other team, force them to make a play, and in return, the margin of error grows. First to 25, win by two in this third set to take a two sets to one lead. Out of the middle, there's Corey Lewis dug up by DePierre. Maldonado Diaz off of Koenig into the floor. Times like this when you're playing really competitive teams are when trust needs to be established on the court. Audrey Koenig crept in there to try to cover Kai Filamawa in the libero jersey. The Kai was there for that dig. You see them have that communication there. You've got to be able to trust that you can defend your position when you're in it. And there's Florida State off serve, receive. Alexander, Chris Poole mentioned it to us. He says, I feel like we're a really good serve, receive team. We can side out at an efficient clip in that department. In transition is where we get into a little bit of trouble. And that's why they worked on it this week. Practice was dialed up the entire week. Players were divided into positions. They worked hard every single day on the things that they needed to work on. And then they'd come together and do drills to implement that. So that was the difference maker for them this week. And even when they've been out of system here, they're finding ways to clean it up and regain momentum. 
And another way to get yourself back into a set is to apply service pressure. Emery dupes, drops in the ace, and then right on the back side commits the service error. That's something that you hate to see from her. She's having struggles with mobility. You see that brace around her leg. She's had tons of injuries throughout her season, or throughout her career, and this season battling coming back. But this is a player that you need in the game if Florida State's going to make a run this season. Good pass off serve received by Dupes. But Maddie Snyder faced a double block and had nowhere to go. That is a rare moment where you have a perfect pass and Florida State doesn't execute. Maddie Snyder is still a young player. She's in her sophomore season. She hasn't quite figured out how to hit around the hands of a block yet. Camden Schran checking in and committing the service error. Schrand who plays in the back row for Louisville as a defensive specialist. Gives the point right back. De Beer. Out of play. Boy, and this is where things get interesting. Each team only has one challenge. And you see Danny Busboom Kelly flirted with the idea of pulling the challenge card, but decides to hang on to it for the moment. Point Seminoles. I like it. That's the competitiveness you want to see. Think about pulling that challenge card. Anna DeBeer thought that ball was in. That's what you call her ever stoic, Sean. Look at that face. And she comes right back and delivers a thunderous kill. This is a player that wants to win. Watch her get up, find the hole in the block, put that right down to the middle of the court. She said, that one was in. No questions there. Maldonado Diaz commits the service error. And while Florida State has a positive ace to error ratio in this match, six to four, that is the ninth service error to only four aces for Louisville. Tell you what, the service errors are starting to become contagious here in this set, Alexander. And they always do. It's just something about the game when momentum shifts back and forth, you start mirroring the mistakes your opponent makes. It's playing to that level. Good pass there by Dupes, and Taylor Head is the beneficiary. That's a great pass, but an extremely hard set for Kenneth Feeling to make. She goes up and puts one hand on that, and somehow it's a perfect set for Taylor Head to put away. Look at that in just the right location for Taylor Head to get through the hands of Kara Cressy and Reese Robbins. Looper. Dug up by Philomawa. And an illegal back row touch by Kenneth Phelan is the call by Mark Prater. And that's an interesting play, too, because it definitely isn't the setter's intent to go up and over, but when you go up and just try to put a touch on it in any way you can, sometimes that happens. Kenneth was just trying to put the set to the outside there, but if it goes up and over, it's a back row attack. So a ball handling error by Florida State. As you see Taylor Head having a conversation with Prater. And I think what she's lobbying for is the fact that Reese Robbins was up over the net with her. So she's trying to call for the fact that she went up and over the plane when Kenneth Feeling's supposed to be able to make a clean set there. Nonetheless, FSU finds themselves trailing by two here in this third set. Opportunity, though, for Henke. Good cover by Koenig. Glock pulled out on first contact. Had a system ball to Looper, and she hammers it to the back corner. That is not a ball in a great place there. That was about eight feet off the net. Looper's able to adjust her footwork and still get up and put that ball to the deep corner. That's a way more difficult play to make than it looks like. And so with the lead swelling to three, Chris Poole calls timeout. The seventh kill for Charity Looper and several of those now coming in this third set that is not yet finished. And so it's Charity Looper 
who is getting in on the act here in this third set in tandem with her fellow pin hitter, Anna DeBeer Alexandra, who has been just tremendous largely tonight. Anna DeBeer with 13 kills already. It's funny how you follow the stars and they do their thing. Anna DeBeer is here showing this is my last time in Tilly Gymnasium and I am going to make a statement. She's been able to get involved in the back row, in the front row, through the block, and she has just shown her power left and right throughout this match. She is so exciting to watch. And to do it at such a high clip, she's got 13 kills on 24 attempts. That's a 417 hitting percentage. This player is here to fight tonight. Four digs, 13 kills, hitting 417. Anna DeBeer, I mentioned those digs. She goes back and does really nice work in the back row as well. Alexander, she's on pace to be a player in Louisville history that goes down as having over 1,000 kills and reaching that 1,000 dig mark. I told you she was a first ballot Hall of Famer. There's no grammatics about it. And she's a Louisville native. This is a player that grew up loving this team, what she's been able to do for this team. And now in her last year, as they're chasing a national title, she's the key. So De Beer and the Cardinals are creeping ever closer to a two sets to one lead. That is an untimely service error, though, by Scott, and it gives FSU a little daylight as they approach what many teams call the red zone, the final five points, 20 to 25, or in the fifth set's case, 10 to 15 of a set. Kong on the slide, and that is put away to the back corner. And I think it's interesting, Alexandra, Danny Busman Kelly told us. She said, at times we debate about whether or not we want to do the 6-2, because in a lot of cases she feels like teams that go 6-2 do so because they don't have middles who can hit the slide. Kong able to do that to perfection there. Exactly. It's extremely difficult to do when you're in a 6-2 because you don't have that right side freed up. So Reese Robbins has to come to the middle just for that slide to be executed. But it doesn't matter because as long as you're switching up the offense, you're pulling blockers in different directions, an offense is an offense no matter how you run it. But it is definitely more difficult to run that slide in the 6-2. An attack error by Florida State, and the lead is now four for Louisville. Koenig again this time from the back row off the triple block and down. A back row attack is harder to execute than it looks, especially when there's a triple block up like that. Audrey Koenig's smart for going up and taking the biggest rip she can on it to break through those blockers' hands. 14th kill for Koenig to go along with eight digs. She rotates up to the front row, Taylor head back to serve. Maldonado Diaz dug up. Corey Lewis dug up by DeBeer. Looper down the line. Philomau, a good defense. Back row to Beer inside the block and down. Great effort from both teams there, but Florida State just not able to make it happen. You can make incredible digs, but if your setter's not able to get there to put a set on it to keep the ball in system, it almost doesn't matter, and that's an example of that right there. And when you have a free ball opportunity, you've got to find a way to put it to the deep corner. You don't want to put it in a shallow spot where the set is easy to push to the outside. These service errors by Louisville are what are keeping Florida State in the picture in this set. And in the match as a whole, 11 to 5. We'll see if FSU can go on a run of momentum. De Beer. Great defense. We play on. Second effort finds the floor. I love watching Anna DeBeer play. She stays so calm and composed, and she is competitive with these swings. She puts the same rip on it every single time. But Florida State, with a huge response on defense, able to pull that out. Emery Dupes making that play, even with the knee brace, was big. You've got to watch her here, make sure she's able to keep her full mobility right now. Koenig turned back. Koenig. Going with that cut shot. 
And that ball hovered over the net. Anna DeBeer knew exactly what to do with it. And that's a really difficult play. There was no blocker up there to help Lauren Robertson. Lauren Robertson can't go up and put a block on that because she's a back row player. All she can do is be a presence at the net, but you've got to have a blocker come in and step up, especially when Anna DeBeer's at risk of making a free ball kill. And that will put an end likely to this set. No call yet made. Louisville thinks they've won it off an illegal back row attack. But the cards are called for being in the net. This is a call that Florida State needs right now. As you said, we were approaching the red zone, Sean, but Florida State's only made a few points since then. So they've got to be able to use this net call to their advantage. So watch the net here. This is a tight play for both teams, but Kara Cressy does. She puts her right hand, it hits the tape there. That's the right call. And De Beer went over to Mark Prater and had a word. Now she's relaying the message back to her coaching staff. And so for the moment, we will play on. Still set point for Louisville. They are now a side out away from taking a two sets to one lead over the homestanding Seminoles of Florida State. Cressy out of the middle, picked up by Phelan. Henke. And now DeBeer rolling it over the block. Out of system ball for Koenig. To the back corner, and FSU keeps it rolling. And that's why you work on your weaknesses all week. That is a great play from Emery Dukes to go up and over to Audrey Koenig. And Audrey being able to time that ball and find the hole in the defense that's the point right now that Florida State needs. This is a timeout that's crucial for momentum. Danny Busboom Kelly going to try to press the reset button for her Cardinals, who seem to think that they had this set one. And look, when Lauren Robertson backhands it across the net, of course everybody in red and black is going to think that they won the point and then the set, but not to be. And now here's FSU stringing together points on the backside. Audrey Koenig has been a huge contributor for the Knowles in this match, and especially so of late. The theme of volleyball is momentum, and momentum is found by setting your hot hitters. Audrey Koenig proving that she is that time and time again throughout this match. She can hit from the left side, from the right side, from the back row. It does not matter. She's going to find those seams in the defense and put the ball down. She's got 15 kills on 31 attempts. Another player hitting near 400. She's got 387 right now. Koenig, 15 kills, hitting 387 and eight digs to go along with it. Came into this match with just over three kills per set on the season, but in ACC play has really picked it up by roughly another half kill or so per set north of four, and her efficiency has increased as well. So she has become one of the two or three leading scorers in this conference and has continued to operate at an efficient clip as well. Feeling back to serve. Maldonado Diaz dug up by the setter. Henke rolls it over. Out of system for De Beer. And that puts an end to set three. Must win set four for FSU, and that's a great way to start it. Lauren Robertson with her third ace of the match. Lauren Robertson came to play tonight. She led that entire huddle in that team timeout between sets. She's ready to come out here. The moment is never too big for her. Maldonado Diaz comes into the middle and gets Florida State scrambling. It took four contacts for FSU to eventually get a ball over. And Louisville sides out one point all. 
the Florida State hitters right now just need to find their confidence again. The outside hitters are doing it really well, but the middles and opposites need to get involved and be confident in their abilities. Head, heavy cross. Kong keeps it up, and we play on. Second effort for Taylor Head. That's the smart play right there. You could switch up the offense, but instead you're going to feed your hot hitter. Taylor Head is able to get up, put a massive swing on that. It's a solo block because she's setting against the grain, right? They're expecting one of those sets to go to the right or the middle, but instead it goes to Taylor Head. A solo block is exactly what she needs. Nine kills, seven digs. Maldonado Diaz hammers it down the line, induces the overdig to Beer, can't put it away. What a rally. Back row Looper hunting the sideline. No kill for Looper, point FSU. That's the energy that Florida State needs, making tough digs and the hitters responding with big swings or smart shots themselves. Watch these digs from Kai Philomawa. She's got that one, she had a second one later on. She's been just fantastic throughout this whole rally here. Tabir kept up by Koenig. And now it's Koenig in transition. Tabir back to work as well. And number 14 in camo is on the board here in set number four. Coach Busboom Kelly told us that of late it's felt like Anna Tabir is back to her old self. I'll say so. 18 kills and counting for Anna. Maldonado Diaz got it inside the block. Audrey Koenig has some confusion on the court right now. She thought they blocked that ball. Watch her celebration from this net right here. She thinks Corey Lewis had it, but they just didn't press enough on that block there. All Emory right, so in the libero jersey this set, that's different, and that's a good sign even after that massive play that she made, checking on her knee brace, now she's in the libero jersey. Florida State needs her. Good pass there by Koenig on serve-receive. Cabello called her own number. Good cover by the Seminoles defensively. Free ball, though, for Louisville. Tabir, tip back. And a net violation will be called against Corey Lewis. These are rare misplays. You don't even want to call them mistakes from Corey Lewis because she's so not a player that typically executes like that. Not pressing on her blocks, touching the net. It's not something that you typically see from her. Koenig this time jammed up on serve, receive. Head launches from the back row. Out of system to De Beer. Maldonado Diaz. Cranks it, and that's a smart swing for Koenig, tooling the block for the kill. That's what you gotta do. You have to play scrappy, right? Anything it takes, get the ball up, get it over the net, but also put an aggressive swing on it. That puts an end to a 3-0 run for Louisville. It'll send Corey Lewis back to serve. DeBeer had to back up on that one. She rolls it across. Koenig, no backing up there. All gas, no breaks, and another kill for number four in white. That is such a well-executed play from Florida State. Nobody's in the libero jersey. The dig is made. Reese Robbins comes into the middle and registers the kill. And the Florida State defense just laughs at that one, right? You've got to take it. If it lands in front of the 10-foot line and it has pace like that, let it go. Fifth kill of the match for Reese Robbins. No errors, hitting 455. Good night for Reese so far. 
Back row attack, there's Taylor Head. Taylor Head is so fun to watch because she is a true six rotation player. On the last rally, she came up and made a great hand set for Audrey Koenig. She has fantastic kick. She's a great passer. She's an aggressive swinger, and she loves the game. I love the energy that she brings every time she gets a kill. And she is one dig away now from a double-double. Florida State's going back to Kelsey Perry as their M2 in this set. Net violation this time against Louisville. Ellie Glock called for being in the net for the cards. I think it's the right call bringing Kelsey Perry back in because at least she can manage the game, right? She's a gamer, she's not afraid of the moment, and that's what you need right now. It's all or nothing here. A couple of years ago in her only action at Iowa State, Kelsey Perry recorded seven kills on 10 swings in an upset of eventual national champion Texas. So it is in there for Perry number three in white, and that's a nice swing. Meanwhile, for Louisville's number 13 in camo, Kara Cressy. Henke picked up by DeBeer. Looper off speed, Phelan picks it up. Florida State scrambles to Audrey Koenig, and that's outside the antenna. That's a tough play to make. It's a smart, aggressive shot, right? She's trying to get it up and over. It was fully intentional, just a little bit missed. Seven all, set four. Elena Scott back to serve. Feeling on the run, head goes back row again, and Taylor head in the back row has found something here. Ellie Glock, the setter for Louisville, is back there in her right back defense. That's the second time in the last couple points that Taylor head's been able to get a kill from that spot. So you want to keep pressing for that. Head, meanwhile, rotates to the front row. Koenig back to serve. And that is a service error. The 11 kills for Taylor Head, a season high in ACC play for the transfer from Arkansas. Now you're seeing with Koenig, the mistakes start to pile on, right? She knows what she's capable of, but they become so mental sometimes. Dupes jammed up on serve receive. And Taylor Head is turned back by the block. She comes away, patting herself on the chest, as if to say, that's on me. Because she knows her volleyball IQ is high enough that if she sees those two blocks there, you've got to be able to do something a little bit more creative with it to try to score. Kenna Phelan reverses the flow to Yane Henke. Off speed, back the other way, PK Kong on the attack. Speaking of off speed and speaking of creativity, there's Taylor Head. And you know that she's going to make those adjustments every time because that's the kind of player she is. This is a player right now, she's creeping up against her fifth double-double this season. Last season, Sean, she had 20 double-doubles. This is a player that knows what it takes to win at an elite level. She's played in her fair share of big-time matches. Service error by the Seminoles. And a point right back to Louisville. Eighteen combined service errors between these two teams. I'll blame Tilly Jim. No arguments here. What the heck? You got to blame somebody, right? Off speed, Maldonado Diaz. Great defense by Dupes. The attack out of play. Dupes kept her team in the rally for the moment, though, laying all out. What a stretch. Two-point lead for Louisville. And there's a service error. Lauren Robertson got this set started with an ace. She has three tonight. Kabir turned back. Scott there to cover. 
Kong off speed, and that is a season high sixth kill for PK Kong. She has had no trouble finding her group tonight. She's been fantastic. The setter and her have been connecting so well. And on the other side, Corey Lewis just isn't, everything is just not clicking the way it typically does for Corey. Back row, Conan! My goodness! Audrey Koenig goes up and puts a swing on that ball that I have not seen before from her. To be able to swing and let the ball bounce off the court when you're from the back row like that, look at how high that ball bounces in its second touch. Impressive for Koenig. Another service error, though, on the back side of the kill, and Louisville continues to lead by two as we creep toward the midway point of this fourth set. Maldonado Diaz targeting Audrey Koenig on serve, receive. And I've got to do a little housekeeping over here. That cross court ball just took out some of our equipment. Great work there, Sean, and great work from Corey Lewis, getting involved on the slide, tooling off the block, finding where the hands are, hitting right into them. That's what she needed. That's what she needs for momentum there. FSU back within one, and now the service error is really piling up for the Seminoles. And it's interesting because if both teams are making this many service errors, it's kind of like they balance out, but they don't. You've got to be able to execute better. This needs to be over and in. This is D1 volleyball. You just can't allow these mistakes to keep piling the way they are. What a stretch by Anna DeBeer. It'll be another kill for Koenig, though. And once again, the Knolls are back within one. They keep siding out in succession. The lead two, then down to one, then back to two, then down to one. Can kind of feel and maybe go on a run here on this service rotation. She'll be iced after this point, though, because they've got to take their mandatory set break. If she can put this one up and in. She's got to jump top. She goes to the float, induces the overpass, and Kelsey Perry is ready and waiting. Perry's done a great job with that tonight, just identifying that ball when it comes over on the overpass, finding where the defense is not putting that ball right down. Once again, with the float, it's an ace serve for Kenneth Phelan, and Florida State leads 15-14 at the midway point. Kenneth Phelan is rocking and rolling with this float serve. She's had a top spin, and now the... Big time smile for Audrey Koenig, and for good reason. She's had a real nice match, and she's off to a good start in ACC play. Over four kills per set. That's good for fourth in the ACC, hitting north of 300. Today, she's got 19, hitting nearly 400 with eight digs as well. Her setter, Kenneth Phelan, is going on a run on her service rotation. Got Louisville out of system, dropped in an ace, and now off a touch, Louisville will get the call for the kill. FSU is objecting, but will they challenge? So how about in layman's terms for Audrey Koenig? Basically what I'm seeing with that graphic is that she was the ACC player of the year last year, but she's even better this year. You watch that ball go up, look at Cherry Luger. She gets so high. They're calling the kill to touch off the high hands there. Kelsey Perry lifts that ball out of play, kind of fisted it toward the sideline. That'll go down as an attack error and off the timeout, Louisville wins the first two points and they lead by one. Henke tools the block off speed for the kill. It was a tight pass and a tight set, but Yana Henke is able to get up and reach up and over into the hands of the block. Getting the tool there is really big. Yane Henke, who hails from Germany, played D2 volleyball at Cal State LA. A player that Chris Poole says has real nice numbers, side out in transition. She's done a nice job for the Knowles this year. 
That's a good swing off the touch for Louisville to re-extend the, or to re-establish the lead, I should say, by one. And that's an example. You don't even need to close the block. You just need to press your hands up and over. That ball got through Kelsey Perry's hands, not through the two blockers. Must win set for Florida State. If Louisville wins it, they win it in four. Back row Koenig. And Audrey Koenig is heating up in the back row. Alexandra, we have seen the Knolls go to the back row more in this set than I've seen them in matches combined now for some time. And it's smart from the setters because you have to set who's hot. And you don't want to push it to the left pin every time because you know the blockers are going to camp there. So you've got to be able to mix it up. And when you have two outside hitters like Audrey Koenig and Taylor Head, get them going no matter where they are on the court. What a stretch by Philomawa on defense. There she is, passing that ball up. And a net call will go against Louisville. So the defensive efforts of Kyleen Philomawa keep her team in the rally long enough for Louisville to make a mistake. And Florida State's setters and middle hitters have not connected well tonight, but when you can force the other team to make an error in the net, you can take that just the same. Looper with the kill. Charity Looper still trying to get going. She's accumulating the kills, a handful of errors as well. Her head coach, Danny Busboom Kelly, saying largely, though, she's been more consistent this year. She's going for it a little more. And when she's making errors, they're the aggressive errors that she wants to see. And you can see that because every time she goes up, I shudder a little bit. She's got so much power in such a high vertical. Speaking of power and a vertical, Anna DeBeer on the attack. Florida State plays it off the ceiling and recycles off the block. And now the Knowles block comes alive. What a point. That is the scrappy, aggressive volleyball that you need to beat the fourth ranked team in the country. Florida State is working everything together, even when the balls are not going up the way you want them to on defense. You make it work. And for Corey Lewis to be able to come there, close the block, and solidify that point for the Knolls is huge heading into the red zone here in the fourth set. One point lead for FSU. Good pass, Kong cross court. That is just so good. And PK Kong is having herself a night. We can confidently say that Louisville knows how to execute the slide in the 6-2, Sean. 100%. 100%. She goes back to serve. That is long. And Florida State is first into that red zone, the final five points of a given set. This is something that Florida State works on a lot. Every day at practice, they go into red zone situations where you're forced to try to come out, out on top. Every mistake is a thir three points for the other team. You get one point as the major scoring team. So this is something that they're very used to. Maddie Snyder with the stop. That's Snyder's first block of the night, and it couldn't come at a better time. To be able to shut down the ACC Player of the Year in Anna DeBeer is huge for her right now. Anna DeBeer only had four attack errors prior to that. Look at the energy from this team. They're so happy for Maddie. Watch her get up. She has her outside hand inside where Anna DeBeer is going to swing. And Corey Lewis and the rest of this team could not be more excited for her. You need your right side hitter to be able to put balls down. Chris Poole, in fact, saying we got to get Maddie going. She's been a little hot and cold, and we've seen what she can do when she really gets hot. She can record kills and bunches. She can record plenty of blocks as well. It's been a quiet night for her, but that is a big time statement in this fourth set. It is a massive statement, and it doesn't matter when you get going, just as long as you do, and as long as you find it, so you can keep building that momentum forward. No matter what the outcome of this set is, that builds confidence. You can put a block up on a player like her, too. As we take a look at the numbers through four sets, one more kill for FSU. Louisville has it cleaner, though, 260 to 240. Eight more digs for the Knolls, one more block for Louisville. Most of their blocks, in fact, coming 
in the second set where they recorded six. Such an even match and huge kudos for Florida State for finding a way to hit around this massive move of block. They were prolific on their block in the second set and now Florida State's able to find a way to hit around it. They've only been blocked twice since then. They've got the crowd fully engaged with the two-point lead late in set four. On the slide, Cressy couldn't connect. That's a risk and reward factor that you have. When you're in the red zone and you want to run a tricky play on offense, you have to re remember that the chance of error is a lot higher there. So instead of taking an easy set to the outside and likely getting a kill, you want to switch it up, but that risk is a lot higher. Maldonado Diaz puts an end to a three-point run for Florida State. And Sofia Maldonado Diaz, who will go back to serve not only a decorated Wildcat in the University of Arizona program, also a member of the Mexican national teams growing up from Guadalajara. Danny Boston Kelly said that that's a player that has really more experience than maybe anybody on the floor, and that says a lot. Meanwhile, for Florida State, hard-pressed to find a player with much more experience than Audrey Koenig, and she knows what to do late in set four. That is kill number 21, hitting nearly 400 for the match. It feels like every time Audrey Koenig is in this gym, she's flirting with 20 or more kills. She is fantastic here at home in her senior season. Florida State is within two points of forcing a fifth. And Louisville is out of system, and there's Kelsey Perry. Timeout, Louisville. Trying to get tricky on the offense can work, but when the block party is rolling, it's hard to stop. That is huge for Kelsey Perry and Maddie Snyder. Watch them read this play here. They come in, seal the block. Kelsey Perry pushes up and over, and these are so good for momentum. You Love this energy, and this is what builds trust. This is what builds team confidence. When you can come through in a red zone and now be up four points when you are tied, four points to go. Louisville coming into this match, one of four teams in the ACC, undefeated. Florida State, one of a trio of teams with one loss. That loss coming to a Virginia team that might end up being the real pleasant surprise in the Atlantic Coast Conference this year, not just sweeping FSU, but also Miami. Chris Poole said yesterday, we've got to find a way to get one back. That's a match we didn't expect to lose. We've got to find one that maybe you don't expect us to win. They're a long way from that, but they are one point away from forcing a decisive fifth set here. A fifth set versus this team is massive. Like I said, the last time they were in Tolly Gym, they were swept, the Seminoles. So now to be able to go into possibly a fifth set would be huge, especially when you've got the highest ranked home win on the line. Louisville, meanwhile, looking for win number five in a row against the Seminoles, their last loss coming in 2019. It'll be Ella Gaona checking in for FSU. It has been all dupes and Philomala for the most part in terms of consistent back row players. So Colin Gaona for the first time. Block causes problems for Louisville, and that's gritty work by the cards just to get the ball over. Tabir will side out for the cards. As brilliant as Audrey Koenig has been tonight, Anna DeBeer has been equally so. 19 kills for Anna, who now goes back to serve on set four. Well, well, well. This match has been so good. It feels awfully snug, and it's a lot of pressure for both of these teams. Louisville won sets two and three. Florida State won sets one and four. First to 15, win by two for the win of this match. Away we go, and Corey Lewis records the opening salvo for the Seminoles. Corey Lewis coming out, firing is what she needs. After an up and down match from her, for her to be able to come into this fifth set and be confident and get kills is what Florida State needs. You've got to have your All-American able to put the ball down and get blocked. Corey Lewis registered four kills on six swings in the first set. 
She has now recorded six kills since. That will be an important player to get going if you're FSU. Meanwhile, Anna DeBeer, if you can keep that train rolling, if you're Louisville, you'll be very happy. DeBeer hits the 20 mark here early in set five. There's not been a single moment where DeBeer has seemed out of system this whole game. She has been focused in collected throughout this match. Every swing looks the same. And there's a big block for Kara Cressy and Sofia Maldonado-Diaz teaming up for the tandem and turning back Audrey Koenig. As we take a look at five set matches to this point this season, Louisville 1-0 defeating Creighton in five, Florida State splitting five setters between their two main rivals, beating Miami here in Tallahassee and dropping a five setter in Gainesville to Florida. Taylor Head out of the back row. That has been one of the added ingredients that the Seminoles have found here over the last set or so, setting the pins in the back row, Alexandra. Not only is she doing that, but that is such a low and fast set. You don't even think that that's going to be a back row attack, but because you have Taylor Head or Audrey Koenig back there, you're able to make a massive play on that. Back set, Maldonado Diaz off the block and out of play. And going back to this transfer from Arizona, Danny Busboom Kelly told us, Alexandra, she is a player that we can trust to take some pressure off the pins and record a kill when we need it. Yeah, she said it's really nice to have somebody that you can trust to make a play, exactly. So you know that she's gonna be able to go out and compete even in the most competitive moments. Overpass, DeBeer picks it up. Now goes back to work. And Kara Cressy just swats that right between two Seminoles, and Louisville opens up a two-point lead. A razor-thin margin for error in a 15-point fifth set. And Kara Cressy picked a great time for kill number three. Pass is tight, Henke swing is on the money, off hands and down. Yana Henke has been a little bit off with her aggression so far throughout this match. She's taken safe swings. That's a safe swing that works. The block isn't fully pressed up and over the net, so hit right into the hand. Fourth kill for Yana Henke to go along with a couple of blocks for the Seminoles' opposite. And there's another ace serve for Audrey Koenig. Ace number three to go along with 21 kills and nine digs. Oh, yeah, and a block. This is a new serve from Audrey Koenig, as I mentioned before. She's not done this serve all four years of her college career, and it has worked for her this season. Trend handles it on first contact, and Kelsey Perry is feeling some kind of way on the block. That's another rejection of Anna DeBeer. And that is why the position is called middle blocker. Watch her get up, keep her eyes on that ball the whole way down, and her react is like, yeah, I thought so. Three-point run for FSU. And DeBeer says, I will have no more of that. Here's a volleyball to the back corner. You don't block Anna DeBeer twice in a row, and we know that. This is a player that knows how to respond. Watch her get up, find the hole in that block, and put the ball down. She has so much pace when she puts that ball down. What a night for Anna DeBeer, who goes back to serve. 21 kills, hitting north of 300. Back row attack, Koenig into the tape. And that's the first miss hit we've seen into the tape from the back row tonight. You'll take it. They've had so many great swings from back there. It's still aggressive. Louisville back in front, six to five. And there's a big stuff block for Reese Robbins. That is a tight ball, which makes it easy to block, but it is just as shocking every time when it goes straight down. Watch Reese press her hands up and over. That ball does not get more than two feet off the net. That is the fourth block for Robbins to go along with five kills. Henke on the attack at a system ball to Charity Looper. Robbins. I said five kills, how about six for number 25? Yeah. 
The team swap sides midway through the fifth set, and with Louisville hitting that eight-point mark on a 4-0 run, they will make their way to the left. Florida State will make their way screen right. Now is the time for Florida State. You want to be first to eight. When you're not first to eight, you need to side out immediately and push. Forget the score and go all out. Louisville's looking for their fifth straight win against the Seminoles. FSU looking for their highest ranked home win in program history. And as these teams head to their respective huddles, Alexander, what stands out to you in this match to this point? Just the aggression from both sides. The, the errors have occurred on both teams, but for each to be able to come back and rally and fight, and you use your hot, hot hitters, you set your stars, and the stars have shown out tonight. The two reigning co-ACC players of the year, Anna DeBeer and Audrey Koenig, perhaps fitting 21 kills each in this match. DeBeer on a double-double, she's got 11 digs. Koenig working on a double-double, she's one away from one herself with nine. We build those two at the very beginning of the show, and these two players have continued to impress here tonight. They've been fantastic, and they are going to be trusted here in these last eight or so points right in this final fifth set. You need each of these players to be able to show out, and you also need everybody else to contribute. This is the moment where you have to have trust in your team. You've got to spread the ball, and you've got to play your best volleyball right now. And so here we go. Off the midway timeout here in set five. First to 15, win by two for the match. The ever stoic Anna DeBeer back to serve. Good pass by Coops, and Taylor Head is the beneficiary. When you have Reese Robbins and Kara Cressy up for a double block and you are still able to power through their hands, that's when you know that you have executed the tempo that Taylor Head needs. That is a fantastic play. Tremendous offense by Florida State. They get the side out and they'll send Ella Gayona back to serve once more. Looper off hands. Phelan pulled out on first contact. Henke launches from the right side. Looper also out of system, and she hammers it to the back corner. That's the power and athleticism that I'm talking about. That is an out of system set that is inside and off the net, but she is able to take a full approach, and there is no way anybody is digging that ball, and it makes you wonder why a libero is not in to serve for that point. 11 kills, eight digs for Charity Looper, and the service error brings Florida State back within two. Florida State needs to use this error, and if I'm Florida State, that is the server I want to see behind the service line. Lauren Robertson with three aces tonight and very few service errors on the season. Season high 15th service error, meanwhile, for Louisville. Robbins, heavy cross. And that finds the back corner. Reese Robbins is having herself a night. Quietly in comparison to the likes of Anna DeBeer and Charity Looper who draw a ton of attention, but she has stepped up big time for the cards. Reese Robbins is big and athletic. She has a heavy hand, so if the ball is in the right position, it's likely gonna go straight down. So you've gotta execute closing the block. Head dropping the hammer. And Florida State sides out on serve receive. That might be the closest set to a shoot that we've seen from Florida State all night, and that's probably the most pace I've seen on a ball from Taylor Head. Watch her get up and swing through that ball. Heads back to serve. Audrey Koenig comes to the front row. And Looper will get the kill off the touch, says Mark Prater, the up referee. Well, you're in a fifth set, and you've got to leave it all out there. This is power swing after power swing. And Louisville as a team hitting 583 in this fifth set. Conan brings the Knolls back within a couple. 
The outside hitters for Florida State are what make this team a top 25 ranked team. And the reason that they are contending with the fourth ranked Louisville right now, Audrey Koenig can do it all. She has so many tools in her hitter's toolbox. Timeout on the floor. FSU calls timeout off the side out and trailing by two here in this fifth set. Which is unusual. Typically you'd want to ride with the momentum. So that means that Chris Poole has something very specific to say, something that they've seen from Louisville and they're trying to find out how to execute right now. Once again, a reminder, we're going to 15 in this fifth set. You must win it by two. So Louisville, for all intents and purposes, as few as four points away from a big five-set win against the top 25 team here tonight. We'll take another look at what's at stake. Louisville, again, looking for their fifth straight win over the Seminoles, the last loss coming in 2019. And for FSU, it would be their highest-ranked home win in program history. And if any team can do it that I've seen from Florida State in these past few seasons is this one. This is a complete team. If they can bring it all together right now, they're going to make it work. And there's a reason that these stats are so close between these two teams here in Two more kills for Louisville. They're hitting a little bit cleaner, 279 to 244. FSU's back row with seven more digs. And then the blocks, close, 10 to 9. The Knowles have held their own in that department, but two big blocks by the cards in this set. The Knowles have been a little bit more mistake prone while Louisville has hit the ball very cleanly so far in this decisive frame. Outside and De Beer. Kyleen Philomala laying it all out to get that ball back to her teammates. Maldonado Diaz cross court finds the sideline though. Great effort by the Knowles, great execution by Louisville. Keeping that ball in play is what you want, but Maldonado Diaz has so much experience in this game. If you give her a pretty much no block situation, she's gonna put that ball down. Three point lead. And Schrand targets dupes on serve receive. Koenig off hands. De Beer off hands as well. And guess who's stepping up big time in the fifth? Sofia Maldonado Diaz. We hadn't called her name a ton until this fifth set, and she is making her contributions count here late. That's what makes the transfer portal so huge, right? You're able to get players like Maldonado Diaz who have so much experience and make a fifth set seem like it's a first set, right? You don't get rattled by the pressure. You're able to execute in the big moments. That is a risky play to go up there and put the swing on the ball. The huddle. They've got the toughest schedule in Division I, according to RPI, and it's hard to argue that logic. They've played a who's who of teams, including Penn State, Nebraska, Wisconsin, their early ACC slate has included Stanford and Georgia Tech, now Florida State. What an impressive squad yet again. Can the Knowles find a way? DeBeer will find that back corner, and the Cardinals have arrived at match points. Free ball coming. And Anna DeBeer, who else? Puts the final nail in the coffin and Louisville comes away from Tallahassee with a massive five set 